Power designers have more choices now than ever. MOSFETs and IGBTs, regular old silicon or wide band gap silicon carbide and gallium nitride. If you can't figure out which option you want out of this power switch alphabet soup, today is your lucky day. We've got Infineon's master chef of power technology, Bob Yee. The title's made up, but the insight he's about to share is real. Thanks for joining us, Bob. Hey, thanks, Chris, for the intro. I'm, I'm happy to sit down with the online community to share the latest advances in power semiconductor offerings. And the, uh, the idea is to empower the design engineers to make the absolute um, best choices and selections uh, for their design needs. Now, you're in a unique position as Infineon is one of the few manufacturers, maybe the only manufacturer, that is firmly entrenched in silicon, silicon carbide, and gallium nitride technology. Is that right? Yes. Yes, that's, that's right. Um, so first of all, Infineon is the largest power semiconductor supplier in the world, and uh, we have a total focus on power. Today, we are the only supplier that offers all three main uh, switching technologies. That's silicon, that includes MOSFETs, trench-type MOSFETs, superjunction, IGBTs, etc. Then there are silicon carbide, which consists of silicon carbide diodes and MOSFETs. And um, now, uh, more recently, with the uh, gallium nitride on silicon. This puts uh, Infineon in a u- unique position uh, to be the only agnostic supplier. When we approach a customer with all three underlying technologies, we can advise on the, uh, the pros and cons of each technology truly without any biases. So that should give you a lot of insight to the challenges that designers are facing and in the market today. And so can you speak to those challenges? When you look at the power supply world, uh, it's all about efficiency, density, and cost. So understandably, this is a very complex topic. For example, designers are always trying to reach the highest efficiency while maintaining cost objectives. That is to say, efficiency can be sacrificed for a lower cost. For example, assuming a designer meets the efficiency requirement but not the cost target, a designer has to make a trade-off on what he has to sacrifice. Then there are you know, the other attributes where designers are faced with making the application as small as they can while uh, maintaining uh, the efficiency. Smaller size has its value depending on the application. You know, For example, if you have a inverter for welding and it needs to be portable, meaning it needs to go in the back of a truck, Um, size and weight matters. So therefore you want a higher density, i.e. smaller form factor. Okay. So, you know, uh, a designer has to make that trade off between how small they want it and what that efficiency needs, because the smaller they want it, the harder it is to get the higher efficiency. And then the third thing, uh, and probably the most important is cost, right? So designers are faced with lower cost while still meeting the efficiency and the density requirements. Making the correct selection of switch technologies at the concept level will guide designers to meet their end goals. At Infineon, we will partner and consult with the engineer, listening to their efficiency, the density, and cost needs. Silicon, silicon carbide, and gallium nitride all have their own attributes. For efficiency needs, silicon is really good up until about 96%, that's not the end limit. You can get 97% efficiency. The problem is is the cost goes way up and wide band gap starts to make more sense. Okay, so in general, silicon switches are good up until about 200 kilohertz. And then when you look at silicon carbide, silicon carbide has a better figure of merit, albeit it costs a little bit more, has a lot more robustness, because it has a better uh, temperature coefficient at higher temperatures, but it is good for uh, 96% efficiency and higher. And therefore we promote silicon carbide in applications typically between 200 kilohertz and maybe up to 400 kilohertz, where we start to see the limitations of uh, the gate charge really coming into play. And then gallium nitride, This is the series that we promote to customers that really require the highest efficiency as well as the highest density. 
And the reason for the highest density is because um, gallium nitride has the lowest figure of merit. It allows you to um, run the switch much, much faster, which gives you the um, ultra low um, dead times that is required for high, switch, high speed switching. And the high speed switching ultimately allows you to use planar magnetics, thus um, decreasing the size of your application. You know, Infineon really uh, goes out and promotes all three switch technologies. It's really up to the customer's needs on efficiency, density, and cost. And uh, we like to see ourselves as the trusted advisor to enable uh, a customer to meet all the three design goals. Given those, the, the different material options and the different factors that customers need to consider, where do you see each technology platform being used? So silicon is used in 90% of the applications, largely because of cost. Uh, no doubt silicon will be the least expensive of the three technologies, all right? And generally speaking, uh, most applications require up to 94%. And whether you use IGBTs, MOSFETs, uh, they're good enough. Silicon carbide is positioned to eventually uh, replace IGBTs and it has the robustness. Actually, silicon carbide is poised to have higher power uh, applications as well. And that's largely because of its temperature uh, codependence where silicon carbide just has a better temperature behavior uh, above 100 degrees C as compared to silicon and or gallium nitride where the RDS on doubles, where sil silicon carbide only goes up a fraction. It really depends on the frequency of the application. It depends on the uh, output power and how the switch is being used and also um, what type of efficiency, which I don't show in this chart, and what type of density you're looking for. And can we talk a little bit more about the temperature dependence of RDS on between the three different platforms? So let's just assume at 25 degrees C, something, you know, one of these devices at 100 milliohms. So if you take a gallium nitride device as compared to silicon carbide, there is a 30% increase at 100 degrees C. If you were to use silicon or, or superjunction MOSFETs, there would be a 50% rise. This is why silicon carbide MOSFETs in general have a distinct advantage at higher temperatures. And this is why I say there's a high degree of robustness with silicon carbide MOSFETs. You know, and the other thing you mentioned was the switching frequency of GAN. Can you talk a little bit more about the differences and the benefits there? Sure. So on this slide, uh, we're figure of merit. You look at the far right. Um, comparing uh, in the gray series here, what we call Kumas 7 is a superjunction technology. So if you were to use a gallium nitride equivalent, the gate charge is reduced by 94%. You know, gallium nitride really is reserved for the higher switching frequency as well as higher densities. And then you look at uh what we call CUSIC, which is a silicon carbide MOSFET technology from us, the 70 milliohm silicon carbide MOSFET would be about 40% lower in gate charge. Now, specific to GAN, uh, where its unique value proposition is, and what you can see here in orange is a superjunction MOSFET where it says C7 ESW. That is the turn off times. And it takes about, about 500 nanoseconds for it to turn off. Now, if you look at the dark green where GAN, which is the GAN ESW, you could see that the turnoff times are an eighth of what superjunction MOSFETs are, right? And if I were to draw a silicon carbide MOSFET in here, it would be somewhere in between uh, the superjunction MOSFET and the gallium nitride. But by far, the clearest advantage for gallium nitride is the faster switching timeframes. And in the end of the day, what does that mean for the designer? It gives you a very short dead time in your switching period. So um, the, lower, the, the, the lower time you spend in, this, um, in the dead time gives you the flexibility to switch that much more faster because the switch is already off. You're ready to move on to the next cycle versus a superjunction MOSFET, for example, and this is the fastest one we have, um, 
is about eight times slower uh, than gallium nitride. This is really where the value add for GAN is. It's really the shorter dead times. So Bob, on that other slide that you had, um, I also noticed that there was a significant difference in the reverse recovery charge between the three technologies. Can you speak to that? Sure. So for all GAN devices, not just Infineon, uh, GAN just intrinsically does not have a body diode built in. Therefore, um, you know, there's zero reverse recovery. And that makes it absolutely perfect for hard switching. All right. So it has a distinct advantage over superjunction MOSFETs. A, a good example and application usage of this parameter is um, the PFC uh, boost. This is why we promote um, gallium nitride in what we call the half bridge totem pole PFC, because there's zero reverse recovery that is completely advantageous uh, to the topology and it increases efficiency. All right. Now notice here, the silicon carbide is 1% of superjunction. There is still, some, there is an intrinsic diode. And, you know, when there's 1% here, you would think it's not a lot, but it really does show up in three kilowatt, five kilowatt systems where they're trying to achieve 96% efficiency or higher this is where that 1% really comes into play. So given the differences in the technologies, what are the real world results of that? Oh, Chris, that's a great question. Um, what I like to use as an example is things that are tangible uh, to the consumer, for example. All these are 45 watt uh, laptop chargers. This $10 laptop charger is probably something you would leave uh, underneath your desk or you know somewhere in your desk and it's stationary. 80% of us would probably carry this Dell laptop charger around with us all day long, students, workers. But for the road warrior who carries a lot of things and really, you know, needs the lightweight, they would get this portable uh, charger that is much smaller that has wide band gap in here. Now this can also be silicon carbide as well. Um, but I think that the they chose gallium nitride because of the higher frequency to get the magnetics uh, smaller. Um, that's the only way to get it smaller. So uh, in that case, gallium nitride is the correct type of switch technology to select for that end application based on the designer's needs. So Bob, this is an interesting slide that shows the different PFC and LLC solutions, and I'm curious how those fit in. So... Um, so what, what I show here on the PFC section is the first four blocks are traditional topologies using silicon. And when you go from left to right, actually um, the efficiency goes up as you go to the right. And the way we do that is with each topology, if you will notice, is they're adding on switches. Adding on those switches cuts down on losses. What's not obvious looking at this slide is that as you add switches, the device, I'm sorry, the application actually gets larger. Therefore, your density goes down. So that is a point of diminishing returns. So when you look to the right, there's a CCM full bridge totem pole. And as you can see on the fast leg of the bridge, uh, they're the gallium nitride switches. And on the slow leg, you see the KUMOS or the MOSFET switches. And again, Gallium nitride is used here, as I spoke of earlier, there's a zero reverse recovery. PFC is hard switching, and that is definitely helping out. This gives you the highest efficiency, the highest density, actually at a lower cost compared to the four topologies on your left. And that is why gallium nitride really is a slam dunk for totem pole full bridge PFC. And then what about the LLC solutions? Yeah, so the LLC solutions, these are really commonly used. This is the first one on the left is a half bridge uh, LLC. And then if you want even higher power, you would go to a full bridge uh, LLC. These are typically used somewhere between 1,000 watts and 2,000 watts. And then when you start to go higher power, they would interleave. So this is an interleave half bridge LLC, and this is a three-phase interleave half bridge LLC and do phase interleave. Again, this is all power going up, right? And these are all great topologies to get you up to about 
97%, maybe even 98% efficiency. So where does GAN come into play? Well, GAN comes into play when you are running above 200 kilohertz, right? So in the LLC portion or what we call the PWM stage or the primary high voltage DC to DC side, to get to the higher efficiency C's, silicon really plays a significant role up until about 98% efficiency. If you want to push it higher than 98% efficiency, you really do have to put gallium nitride or silicon carbide. If you want to achieve a system efficiency of 98%, that means the PFC block has to be minimally 99% efficiency, which you can get with the full bridge totem pole PFC. And depending on the primary high voltage DC to DC side, you would also have to get a 99% efficiency and you would have to use a wide band gap technology. And this is why when we go to customers, you know, we are the agnostic supplier. Case in point, if it's 130 kilohertz in a half bridge LLC, I will recommend a Kumos part or a super junction part and not a gallium nitride part because, um, you know, it, it, it would just be the more cost effective of the two um, technologies unless they needed 99% efficiency. So we've talked about a lot of different things and, and how to pick the right switch, but could you give us a summary of gallium nitride and silicon carbide switches? For gallium nitride, number one, by and large, is the zero reverse recovery. That enables hard switching topologies because there is no diode to get in the way, all right? and that really increases your switching frequency. Secondly, um, GAN uh, transistors have a lower gate charge. Lower gate charge, uh, number one, um, gives you less uh, uh, switching losses, but more importantly, it allows you to switch much, much faster. Again, I pointed out to the uh, smaller uh, dead times, right? So you really should be using gallium nitride if you're two, running at 200 kilohertz and higher. So now moving on to silicon carbide. Silicon carbide is a fast switch, but not quite as fast as gallium nitride. The, the second biggest thing is the temperature coefficient. Um, you know, silicon carbide has a superior temperature operation um, at higher temperatures compared to silicon and gallium nitride. And again, the silicon carbide has a better figure of merit than, than compared to silicon, but ultimately gallium nitride is the better of the three in terms of figure of merit. So in summary, you know, one of the things you have to keep in mind is again, cost, efficiency, and density. And at Infineon, we have all three platforms, all three technology platforms. Silicon, you know, will cover today about 90% of your application needs. As a guidance, anything lower than 96% efficiency, we would recommend uh, silicon or superjunction MOSFETs. And for anything greater than 96% efficiency, uh, we recommend either silicon carbide or GAN. Silicon carbide, in the case where high temperature operation, where it has a value add, and for gallium nitride where you need really the best efficiency and highest density. Uh, Infineon is your agnostic supplier of choice. We want to be number one in power and we focus on power and we want to be the trusted partner with our customers. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about your product roadmap and how that can address your customers' design challenges? Sure. Today, uh, I'm only talking about the high voltage gallium nitride. We do have 100 and 200 volt gallium nitride switches coming uh, soon. But in the case of uh, the high voltage, what we call 600 volt Kugan devices, Kugan is our trademark name. Um, you can see in uh, outline, it's greater for 96% efficiency. If you look at our packaging selection, uh, they are intended to um, be easily manufactured uh, in the assembly line uh, for the end product. Therefore, we chose the DSO package, what we call the TO lead list, which is a 10 by 12, and also the 8 by 8 QFN. And by the way, we also have the drivers as well. Um, and we range anywhere uh, from 
35 milli ohms to 190 milli ohms today. So that would include applications of about five kilowatts, maybe down to about 700 watts, right? So um, in the near future, we will have 340 milli ohm to one ohm variants, but today um, we are targeting the high power ranges and our philosophy is to use industrial standard packaging so that when the customers design in the lab, they can go right to production and not have any manufacturing surprises. And then for silicon carbide, um, we follow our uh, IPC um, division where they have released the 1200 volt silicon carbide. Our version in PMM is a 650 volt version. Um, it goes as low as 35 million all the way up to 145 milli ohm. Again, these would be used in higher power applications. And again, you know, these are in teal type packages intentionally because they do really do take place of an IGBT quite easily. Uh, and in future releases, we will have our surface mount versions. It will be a D squared pack, as well as what we call a teal leadless for applications that require um, surface mount and not teal types. And again, we have a wide range of drivers that um, are associated with silicon carbide MOSFETs. You know, we've been dominant here in the space with superjunction MOSFETs since 1999, and we are now up to generation seven. And this is what this ending of the seven means. Uh, there is another generation eight coming behind us, but we range anywhere from 600 volts to 950 volts. And then the series here that we show really depends on the switching behavior uh, of the topology you're using. So you would pick a CFD7, for example, for a ZVS operation where um, the reverse recovery is very critical in non-load non or no-load conditions, right? For safety reasons, you would use this in Fulbright ZVS and LLC. And then if you needed just really hard switching, high performance parts, we would suggest you use C7 or even higher, what we call G7. And our P7 series is really the uh, jack of all trades. Um, it is the good enough performance. And this is probably the widest um, offering. And as you get higher to higher performance, as you can see, the packaging gets narrower and narrower. And that's because of higher density needs. Uh, we know it's a lot of parts. Uh, we ask you to allow us to be your trusted advisor as to which technology platform would best fit, again, your cost needs, your density needs, and your efficiency needs. Okay. Well, thank you, Bob, for taking the time today and giving us your insight on how to pick the right switch. If you'd like more information on Infineon's different technology platforms and how they fit into your design, click the links in the description or visit us at mauser.com. And be sure to check back soon for the next episode of Tech Chats. Mm -hmm.